much. So Vinny is on vacation. I'm getting a bit of a... Okay, no echo now. Thank you. Um, I am Karen Quintostado from TaxFree15.com and UnitedWeWin.me because United We Win, but it takes me. I have to become involved, you know, and... So today I have some friends on, and we're going to be talking about some current events as well as just connecting from different parts of the globe. I also want to remind folks that on the 14th of this month, we have our United We Win Marathon, and my guests are also partaking in that. And if you've had enough, folks, if you are tired of always acquiescing, always going against what you know to be true because government tells us lie after lie after lie after lie. And really think about what freedom is. You know, here in America on the 4th, we're going to be celebrating our Independence Day. But that's really a huge joke because we're not independent, we're not free. We can't say no to government mandates. And uh, one of the worst ones has just come up, the European Stability um, Maintenance, I think it's, or a machine, mechanism, mechanism, the ESM, which is actually the European Screwing Mandate. And so I figured we'd have some Europeans on with me this afternoon. So my first guest, actually I'm going to have you all in this half hour, but I'd like to introduce you to my friend Detlef from Wake News. Dot net. Detlef is over in Switzerland. Detlef, I'm happy that you could make it today and join me on the program. Yes, thanks uh, for having me, uh, Karen. And uh, obviously my greetings go to Vinny as well. Uh, I think he's got a few days of vacation, so he's uh, you know, <laughs> gathering some strengths for everything which is coming up. And uh, Karen, well, you are all aware of what's happening in Europe as well. I mean, we will have... Uh, uh, some information here to share with you as well. And I don't know whether I ever told this on, on this radio here, but I was raided uh, recently in May 22nd. Um, they took all my equipment because I have a radio station, an internet radio station here in Switzerland. I'm covering uh, uh, the German-speaking area, <laughs> Switzerland, Austria, and Germany. And they didn't like it, you know, so uh, they didn't like the, my way of uh, taking the, my f free speech over here. And uh, this is something which uh, tyranny doesn't like. So they took everything, and I still haven't got it back. What do you think about this, Karen? I <laughs> think a it's drag, a lot of... Isn't it? It's a load of crap. Criminals run all politics, and I know they woke you up at like 4.30 in the morning. You had the uh, the Swiss police. I guess it would be a Swiss version of a SWAT team, would it not? Yeah, maybe not as, uh, you know, as militarized uh, as it is in the States, but, you know, still it was pretty frightening. I mean, 14, 15 people, you know, in <laughs> front of my door. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> no, I'd I'm... rather not. <laughs> yeah, I'm such a peaceful man, you know. I usually, uh, you know, violence is not my kind of uh, game, uh, usually. So, but you know, they had to take their guns and uh, get onto my free speech. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what they told you. You were accused of, right? Let the listeners know what they told you. The reason was that they came in there. Well, actually, uh, first of all, you know, I, I usually ask, do you have a, you know, uh, there's something in written form, you know, you know, just not just uh, entering my my apartment, but they had some documents to show me, and uh, and I asked them, what's the reason, you know? I thought, uh, well, maybe it's uh, Mr. Rothschild or Rockefeller or somebody who's complaining about me. Uh, no, it was a complaint from uh, Germany, which is next door. You know, Switzerland and Germany are, uh, you know next door sort of and um, there was a um, uh, an order by uh, the uh, German police you know they, they uh, asked the Swiss um, colleagues to help them in order to re to enforce uh, their um, you know their uh, complaints and uh, well and it was because of ill speaking can you imagine yeah. Ill -speaking. You actually had an opinion. You you used your opinion, your freedom of speech. Can you imagine, Karen? No. I mean, what, what what would happen in America? I mean, you know, I 
I will not come to America anymore because, you know, I may be in jail huh, already. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so, uh, you know, to make the long story short, um, I'm still, you know, waiting to get my stuff back. And yesterday we turned in um, uh, our complaint uh, to the highest uh, um, uh, criminal court here in Switzerland, which uh, which is in Bellinzona, that's in the Italian part of Switzerland. And, uh, you know, now we are waiting for, you know, that they come out, uh, come off uh, their vacation. You know, maybe sometime in August or September they will take a decision. <laughs> so I'm, you know, basically, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I cannot do anything, you know, a part of, uh, you know, being in, in, on your show tonight, for instance. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it definitely took away your ability to have your own program on your own terms. And they confiscated, you know, personal things as well as your your computers and everything. Now, did you get anything back? Yeah. In the meantime, I got some cameras back and some audio um, devices and so forth. But uh, you know, they took all these uh, storages uh, storages away. All the, um, <clears throat> you know, where I where I keep my 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 uh, all inf all of my information, all the computers, you know, the hard drives and and the discs and so forth. So they <laughs> took everything away. So I had to p repurchase uh, everything, you know, so I can make pictures and uh, make videos and so forth. Can you imagine? I mean, this is a real drag. I mean, this costs also a fortune. You know, I have to pay everything, you know, the courts, they want money, the, the, the lawyers want money, so this is really uh, giving me a, a headache, sort of, you know, <laughs> free speech. I, yeah, we don't have free speech here. They tell us that we do, but they can, they can come in, and actually they were polite, you know, in, in your country to at least knock on the door. Here we've had SWAT teams come in and actually break the door down over uh, something as trivial as a, a college debt payment that was remiss, you know. So they over here, it's a, it's getting worse all the time, you know. And it's also going bad for our friends who are over there in Ireland. And right now, I'd like to introduce you to Alan and to Steve, who are from OYMIreland.com. They've got their own radio program every Sunday. Uh, they're also part of United We Strike or United We Win Marathon and have a great website. So welcome, Alan and Steve, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Hi, Karen. Good evening to you. How are you doing? Karen, very I'm good doing evening. Well. Uh, very good evening. You're not going to start shouting like Vinnie now, sure you're not? No. No, I, I uh, am a little mellower than Vinnie, yeah. although I think Vinnie's got the right idea much of the time. Yeah, the last time we were on with Vinny, I think uh, when Vinny launched into one, <laughs> we had to we had to pull the headphones off real real quick because uh, yeah he he he's very passionate. <laughs> That's one way of doing. And Detlev, uh, good yeah. evening to you there. We we yeah. we did um um sorry to hear about what happened with your raid. We did get you on OIM there a few weeks ago to uh, talk to us about it, and um, it's sad to hear that you can't even have an opinion these days. You know. Yeah, thanks a lot, Evan and Steve, and uh, thanks for having me on your show. That was uh, right after after my raid, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I'm fighting, and I know you are as well, and uh, we will discuss later on the, the Roger Hayes stuff. Yeah, we? yeah, I think, well, does it, does, you know, do, there aren't things like the um, uh, martial law being announced, I suppose, or people talking about martial law coming in, and the uh, the, the cabal and the, the system tightening things down. But there is um, light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm sure you guys have been watching the news and have seen that there's an awful lot of arrests globally taken on, even down to uh, the likes of uh, Nicola, Nicolas, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, who was the ex-French president, and his home got raided by the French police. Um, because of this, yeah, yeah, it was yes. in, it was reported yeah, just today, today yeah. just today, and obviously with the the banks, uh, the information I sent you over there the other day, Karen, regarding the banks in the UK being um, uh, the uh, CEO and chief of Barclays Diamond and two other people have um, left the bank, have resigned from the bank, and there's a few of the banks who've been involved with this, and now the MPs are opening up an inquiry as to what went on. Um, and globally, there's been a lot of things going on. There's been a lot of arrests, um, a lot of banks and people resigning. Um, 
And, you know, if, if it is the case that the White Hats or whoever is behind this, psychologically I can see their point. Because they want to actually expose it like Smith Klein Beecham have now been fined the drug company three billion over what they've been doing. So all this is beginning to come out into the press, which, you know, go back two, three, four years, you'd probably never hear about it. But it's all beginning to come out now. Well, now, what other high-profile um, arrests have taken place? Because I know that um, over here we've got Drake, who's talking about uh, they've got the green light and that we should be seeing these mass arrests, these perp walks. You know, but I'm seeing the same old poops walking around giving the same old edicts. So if you're – I didn't see that Sarkozy was um, – was he arrested? Um, he, was, he wasn't arrested, but his, his, uh, his villa or his house in France was searched because apparently he's been – he was involved with some of the banking um, fraud that was going on and they're searching his, his villa to find out exactly what went on and what he was involved in. Um, you know the bankers in Iceland, two bankers in Iceland have been arrested and they were um, jailed for about, I think, three to four years. Um, so that's gone on. Also, I'm just looking up here um, other information that um, we have come across. Um, there was some, somebody else in another country that was actually uh, locked up and apparently rested um, for 15 years. I'm just trying to get the information out. But it seems there's an awful lot going on. Um, all I've kind of been seeing is that um, um, people either being arrested or being, you know, looked into uh, to find out what they've been, do- you know, if they've been been doing dodgy dealings, or um, people have been resigning, and even resigning, they don't seem to get away from it. They seem to be chased up as well. Um, so, which which is good to see. But um, yeah, if you want to um, uh, if you want to carry on, I'll just have a quick look. There were, as I say, there was another chapter I seen that was uh, arrested or jailed for 15 years. But I'll try and find that for you. That would be good, yeah, because I I did some uh, some running around today and just got back. Now I know that they have also passed the treaty of this uh, this ESM which is now a permanent bailout fund for private banks, a sort of permanent welfare for the rich. I'm uh, reading now from Ellen Brown's latest article. Um, There's no ceiling set on the obligations to be underwritten by the taxpayers, no room to negotiate, and no recourse in court. Its daunting provisions were summarized in a December 2011 YouTube video originally posted in German titled The Shocking Truth of the Pending EU Collapse. And uh, actually, I'm going to have to get into the chat room here, and I'll do that on the the break on Vinnie Eastwood's chat room so that I can add some of these links. If I go there now, uh, the sound will come on (laughs) before I have a chance to shut it down, and I know I'll get get in trouble. But this treaty establishes a new intergovernmental organization to which we are required to transfer unlimited assets within seven days if it so requests, an organization that can sue us but is immune from all forms of prosecution and whose managers enjoy the same immunity. There are no independent reviewers, no existing laws apply. Governments cannot take action against it. Europe's national budgets are in the hands of one single unelected intergovernmental organization. That's brilliant. So this... Uh, yeah, you have seven days to pay up, and so I guess they're going to let you know when you have to cut a check or when they're going to get into your bank account to pay some of this other fraudulent banking debt that we've all been saddled with globally. Uh, well, Karen, I think that's, that's absolutely fantastic. I mean, that, that the people, well, I know some of the countries didn't actually get to vote on this, but Ireland, Ireland did, and I mean, if, if, if the vote is to be, be, to be believed that the Irish people were well aware of what was in this treaty and they still vote with 60, 60% of the population voted yes. Well, I mean, I think then 60% of the population would need to maybe see a psychiatrist. Um, but from what we heard, from what we've heard over here, that everyone, it, it was a majority no vote. That's that's pretty much what we're hearing. You know, the, the, the dogs on the street are saying that it, it, it was a majority no vote. And I believe one of the Irish politicians, his name escapes me at, at the moment, but I believe he's an independent politician. He's not affiliated to a party. Um, I believe he has 
he has brought something be- before the courts and now say don't quote me on this but as far as I'm aware the treaty although it kind of got the majority yes vote hasn't actually been signed sealed and delivered I think there's, there, there, there is a kind of a cooling off period and this guy was on the ball he has brought some inf- some new information and he has he's brought it to the, the high court or the supreme court and as far as I'm aware until this is this information is kind of uh, gone through the mail or gone through the the, the legal process that the ESM treaty slash bill or whatever it's kind of on hold here in Ireland at the moment well that's what say that's what we're hearing so I, I can't actually confirm that at this moment but it, it, it you know it's it gives a little bit of breathing space but it, it is sad that we're oh. uh, we'll be right back folks stay tuned to the Vinnie Eastwood show there you go folks we are back today this is the Vinnie Eastwood show Vinnie is on vacation I'm Karen from United we win dot me And my guests today are Detlef, who is also part of United We Strike, United We Win, and he is from wakenews.net. And my other guests today for this first hour are Alan and Steve from oimireland.com. And, Alan, we were talking about some of the banker arrests here. I'm seeing that there is a June 20th, 2012 um, article here that says, yes, Iceland's special prosecutors have confirmed raids taking place, although I I really don't like the idea that they're only getting four years for this kind of malfeasance. These guys are lucky they're not tarred and feathered. Well, it's, it's, at least they're getting jailed. The problem is trying to, I mean, if you look at Barclays, they got something like a $290 million fine, a million sterling fine, and um, ideally that's not good enough. The people who actually started this or who's involved in this, they should be arrested and they should go to jail, not just pay a fine. So I'm hoping to see more of this going on. The actual link um, regarding that, um, uh, I think it was a, a Eastern, um, uh, probably an Eastern uh, bank or a chap that got 15 years, I think, I don't know. I'll have to track that down. I can't seem to find that. But what's generally happening, happening and what I can see globally from you know emails coming in from listeners and stuff like that is that there is this mass arrest going on, if not people resigning from big banks. Now, I know in the, I know in the U.S. you have five big banks over there who are doing uh, wills, living wills, um, because, I don't know, are they shutting down, closing down business? Because they're saying the U.S. dollar is definitely on the rails, and the euro is on the rails as well. And we had uh, F. William Endall on the show last night, um, or was it uh, Sunday night, and uh, we were saying that basically the euro, they're just kicking the can down the road, really, with the euro, and I'm sure the dollar's the same. Yeah, we should well, kick their cans down the road. Yeah, Karen, and, and, and you know, I mean... In the Credit Suisse here in Switzerland is also in trouble, and uh, J.P. Morgan, as we all know, and we're waiting for Goldman Sachs, huh? people to uh, get arrested soon, hopefully, huh? <laughs> well, it's it's all happening. <laughs> uh, Russia today have reported on the the banking crisis in the UK. You probably heard as well that the uh, Ulster Bank has been hit with. They say it's a technical glitch and blame some chap in India. But the, the Ulster Bank system has been down now for, what, about two weeks, Steve? I think it's about nine, nine no, it's about 12 days, I think. About 12 days, and they're saying that I won't be back up, on, up and running until next week. And so they're having major issues. Now, there, we also know there's been a global cyber attack taking place, and multiple banks have been hit with that. And there's been apparently about 80 million or so, even more probably money by now, being taken out of these accounts. And if you look at the um, technical background of how this was done Um, it's either done by somebody who's on the inside or somebody who actually knows the systems because the actual security systems they have in place to highlight any issues like this or accounts being money being taken more than what they should there's there's normally fail safe mechanisms in place to you know alert people to that well these were all bypassed by this cyber hacking so there's definitely something going on globally and we know that banks are have been bailed out and basically they're they um you know they've been paid off so why they're asking people to pay their mortgages and still pay debt off when all the banks have been bailed out is beyond me but i do think that 
with everything going on at the moment with the banking system across the world, I mean globally, that this is the finite, this is where it's coming to, where the banks are going to be shutting down. They, they, they're struggling at the moment. And people are getting scared and they're saying, well, listen, I think I better go down and get my money out just to be on the safe side. And we all know the worst thing that you can do on the bank is when banks have a run on the bank because they know they don't have the money to back it up. Yes, and it's really so important that we start to look at where our money is and who is handling it and what we're putting it into. You know, if we've got stock in BP, you know, anybody who has stock in BP, please think about what you're doing. Why are you supporting BP? You know, if you're supporting Raytheon or Halliburton, I mean, we've got a global scenario where it's so obvious that profit is put above people all the time. It's profit over people, it's rules and it's regulations. And it is this, um, I, I agree with Mark Passio. He's going to be joining me this Friday, too. I host a regular program every Friday called Karen's Corner on Rents Radio as part of Charlie McGrath's Wide Awake News. And I'm going to have Mark Passio on from What on Earth is Happening. And he talks about the religion that permeates all other religions and all institutions, and the biggest one that we need to be aware of, and that is the religion of authority. You know, why are we so willing always to give away our power to justify wrongs? I mean, we don't have human rights. We have human wrongs. Everywhere you turn, it's a human wrong. But yet they tell us the lies to make a reason for us to actually accept it. But we know intrinsically and internally, like, thou shalt not kill. That's just one of those basic, basic core values. That is a natural law. And yet they make it so that we are accomplices in murder because they take our money through taxes, through actually illegal taxes and fines and fees, and they use that to pay for this. Anywhere from 48 cents to 52 cents of every dollar goes to fund the war instead of really looking at the freedoms that we don't have, that we should have, because we're under legal economic conquest, totally, just like this ESM, which is just more BS. You know, they get together, they have their little meeting, they pass the laws, and, and we, have to, we have to honor that. Now, Detlef, over there in Switzerland, where you've got the Bank of International Settlements, you know, how, how much of a militarization there are you seeing, or have you noticed one, where they're, you know, fortifying themselves more? Because that's the, the big daddy of all banks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but on the other hand, in Switzerland, everything's a little bit um, played down, you know. So it's it's not as obvious as in other countries may be, but still, you 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 can feel the um, uh, you know the things which are coming up, and especially you know with the ESM uh, taking place here uh, in Europe, uh, in Germany, we had immediately after the German Parliament uh, voted for the ESM. Although uh, the population did not want it, right, uh, there were tw over 12,000 uh, lawsuits <laughs> issued <laughs> to the highest court, you know, to the constitutional court, uh, immediately uh, via fax, you know, facsimile. <laughs> so uh, there, there would be lots of trouble for them. And uh, basically, I had a show on this Friday um, on my Wake News TV. A video channel on YouTube, and uh, I named everybody who uh, voted for the ESM in the German Parliament, and, and now everybody knows <laughs> who voted for it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. You know, you have to call them what they are. You know. Well, one thing that we should we need to understand is Black's Law Dictionary has a definition of a politician. And basically, it's someone who is promoting a political um, theology and idea, but they're not even part of the government. When you look at a definition of a politician which says that they're not even part of government, you start to get an inkling of just how huge the scams are that we live every day under, thinking that it's truth, thinking that we actually have some kind of freedom. Now, um, you mentioned Roger Hayes being arrested 
And I'd like to get into that a bit. Roger Hayes, as far as I understand, was part of the uh, European Constitutional Party over there and was very instrumental in having meetings and speaking up for truth. And what is, uh, what's happened to him, Detlef, that you know of? And then we'll go to you, Alan and Steve. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I received the information uh, through a UK column um, from uh, Great Britain. And Roger Hayes was arrested and tried in a secret court and imprisoned. And, and he's, he's head of the British Constitution Group, uh, as they uh, call themselves, and he's the chairman there. And he was arrested at his home and uh, was driven away. Um, well, yesterday. Oh, so yesterday he's already morning. been arrested and tried and in prison. The trial is over? The secret trial is over? Well, maybe maybe Alan and uh, Steve do have further information, but uh, that's what is written here in, in the UK column, um, and that he was uh, taken and uh, at 9:30 in the morning uh, local time, and um, only as of 6:30 uh, uh, in the evening uh, the family got to know about it. You know, so they didn't even know where he was. So that was a real thing, you know, and this is very. Very strange, and and he was so uh, so much uh, for the constitution. So he was really looking for the truth and uh, trying to to talk to the people about uh, the British constitution, which is so important for freedom, as it is in the United States. Uh, maybe, um, Alan, do you have um, more information, of Steve, on on the issue of uh, Roger Hayes? Yeah, we can. I'll pass it over to Steve in a minute. Steve got an update on it, but just to a bit of a background. Um, Roger was one of the people who organised um, to arrest a judge in a place called Birkenhead. And they actually went in to the courtroom. There's a whole uh, group of people went in to actually arrest the judge. And um, they were quite successful, I'd like to think, what they did. And we heard that after that incident, the judge actually retired because he was so probably so shocked that people actually went up and stood up against the system. Um, and if you go on to YouTube and type Birkenhead Judge Arrested, you'll actually uh, see the YouTube video. You'll see all about it. Um, we got the news uh, today, earlier today, about Roger Hayes. And, um, yeah, you're right there, Detlev. He was the chairman of the British uh, Constitution Group. And I think the authorities probably didn't forgive him for the Birkenhead situation. So um, they obviously were out to get him. But I'll pass you over to... Uh, Steve, Steve got an update today. Steve, if you want to... Yeah, uh, I, I, I also seen the, the article this morning. Alan actually, I was in work and Alan texted me and I jumped on the internet to to have a look to see exactly what was going on. And I, I, I went to the UK column. I seen the information there and obviously like everyone else here and other people, obviously worldwide, I was horrified that this could happen. But then later on, uh, it was actually on the British Constitution on on their own. Uh, I think it's the bcgroup.org.uk. Uh, they actually had an update of what had happened, and uh, allegedly uh, Roger was due in court on the 21st of June in relation to a council tax issue. Uh, they said he was refusing to pay his council tax, but he wasn't refusing to pay. He was which he, he just withheld his council tax. He wasn't refusing, he was only withholding it um, because he didn't agree with where uh, a certain percentage of that money was being spent and it was it was being spent, as far as he was concerned, on the war in Syria. So he wasn't refusing, he, w he just withheld it and, and that's what it said on, on the update. But because he didn't actually turn up uh, to the court date on the 21st of June, there was a bench warrant then issued for his arrest and uh, I think we, we, we know what happened after that. But that's that's uh, that's my understanding, say, from their own website, what has happened uh, to date. Wow. So were you going to say something else? Yeah, go else? ahead. Go ahead, uh, Karen. Mm, well, I just wanted to mention I, I um, sent an email today to the uh, respective uh, police station, the Merseyside um, um, Police in uh, Liverpool, to uh, get an answer on what is happening, but I have, they haven't uh, got back to me yet. Uh, maybe they will not. Well, never. <laughs> we'll see. No, Detlev. As far so as we I have to take some action. As far as I've seen, Detlev, uh, th there was also uh, some information, in re and people were saying that uh, you should uh, phone on uh, or email uh, 
one of these uh, p- police stations. But seeing me, the police stations, they issued a statement to say that the, uh, the man is incarcerated. They gave the reason as to why and said that they won't. He, he's, he, his, his health is fine and they won't be taking or returning any calls in, re- in relation to anyone who, who's looking for information on Roger's well-being. Yeah, why should they? I mean, they're public servants, but, you know, we got it all backwards. We've been brainwashed into thinking that these public servants are are our bosses. We pay the sons of guns. We pay to be abused, which is so far beyond being acceptable. It brings me back again and again and again to the only thing that I see that we can do that's our last shot is really to strike, to just say no more. I refuse to be an accomplice. I refuse to work as long as you take 52 cents of my money to pay for the war. Anyway, folks, let's think about that. We'll be right back after this with the Vinnie Eastwood Show coming to you live today with uh, Karen from United, we win.me, Detlef from wakenews.net, and Alan and Steve from oimireland.com. <laughs> What would your life All right, guys, I'm going to keep the queue down so you guys can chat, and I'll let you guys know when we're coming back. It's all of that. Thank you, Thank you very much, Adam. Okay, no, no problem. problem. Uh, yeah. No calls yet. Okay. Okay. No. Um, I, I still haven't found that link. If I, if I find that, I'll send it over to you, Karen, about that chat for 15 years. Um, but, um, yeah, there just seems to be an awful lot of information Um and people being arrested and things going on so i think that's a good sign now we have the fourth of july and we have the drake situation as well he said you know fourth of july and everything else um i'm on with dave corso in five hours um uh, so i'll be speaking to dave and will be the fourth of july um in about 40 minutes over here um, so we'll just Whoa. see see <laughs> see what happens. Actually, Detlev, you're probably what an hour or two hours ahead of us, so it's probably the fourth of July over there by now. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but you know we don't we don't have this fourth of July uh, holiday over here. But yeah, no, either either the way, either the way. But uh, it's just does it does there has been a very big emphasis on the fourth of July and all got to do with mm. the global cabal and the U.S. and stuff, you know, so I'll be just curious to see what develops tomorrow. I'll be sitting back as an observer just to see what happens. Sure, yeah. I'm well, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about this, uh, uh, about Drake, I mean, really, I mean, you know, I'm a little hesitant. I mean, there's lots of uh, talk about that he may be a fraud or maybe he's a coin, coin tell or whatever. Yeah, well, I've been, sorry, Karen, go ahead. It's hard to know uh, what he is, but already some of the timeline has gone by, and I don't know if people are really being arrested. And when he talked about the 4th, he didn't say so much on the 4th, but, yeah, sit back and enjoy the fireworks. It's a green light any day now. We can't see anything else. So I'm interested, too. But one of the reasons that I wanted to go in shopping today was so that we were here and uh, I'll stock restocked up and ready to go on the fourth. Absolutely, just it's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I think I think we're, we're going to have to uh, to do that just in case. I've just found another article. I don't know whether you know about this. Ex City Group VP gets eight years for stealing twenty two million. Eight mm-hmm. years. Yeah. Eight years. That's nothing. And he'll be out in what six months or a year. That yeah, well, maybe. Be Maybe before, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just, yes. I do, I do, you know, over the last few days I've been looking, what, uh, viewing this, but yeah, on the Drake scenario, I mean, he, he's put his neck on the line to say about this July 4th thing. Now, I'm like you guys, I'm very sceptical, and I, I'm not, I'll, unless I, I see it happening, and I think Steve's the same, mm-hmm. um, that unless we see it happening, because we've heard so many stories of this is going to happen, that's going to, and it doesn't happen. So we are on the fence as always, you know, w- until we see things happening. But if so, I'm skeptical anyway. So if what Drake says, if nothing happens, then he might as well, you know, go away and don't come back really, because, you know, 
he's he's put his neck on the line by giving the date. Yeah, that's something that'll be real interesting to see. Or a round here. I mean, I, I don't think it, it was, at least when I listened to it, it didn't sound like he said it would be on the 4th of July, but he did want us to sit back and enjoy the fireworks, and it was around the 4th of July any day now. So it could still be the um, – he didn't claim that specifically the 4th of July was the day it was all going to come down. Well, he did say that th there would be um, an increase in activity up to the 4th of July and there'll be a few things going on. And even, I was listening to David Icke earlier on, and even the uh, even David Icke is saying that there's, you know... All right, guys, uh, we're coming up here. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Only on American Dream Radio. <laughs> I stand alone against your mad, deadly, worldwide, conspiratorial, gangster, computer god communism with wall-to-wall, -wall deadly gangster protection, lifelong sworn conspirators, murder incorporated, organized crime, the police and judges, the deadly sneak parroting puppet gangsters using all the gangster deadly Frankenstein control, these hangman rope sneak deadly gangsters, the judges and the police... Trap, rob, wreck, butcher, and murder the people that keep them terrorized in gangster Frankenstein earphone radio slavery for the communist gangster government and con artist parroting puppet gangster playboy scum on top. <laughs> All right. This there is Karen, is and uh, we're coming back here with the Vinny Eastwood Show, and uh, my guests have been Detlef from WakeNews.net and also Alan and Steve from OIM Ireland. And we were talking during the break about what is happening here in the year of 2012 in terms of the banksters. And for those of you who have uh, heard of him, Drake is an American who's been talking about uh, it's the green light here uh, as far as he can give out a date but saying to watch the fireworks sit back and watch the fireworks, enjoy them on the 4th, and we'll see what happens. I guess if uh, Sarkozy was arrested, at least we're seeing some of these bankers in Iceland, but not very much time. You know, I mean, it's their sentences should be a lot more severe. They should be fined. They should really lose all rights and privileges for, <clears throat> for ripping off the people with these fraudulent schemes. And, Alan, you were going to say something here about uh, that related to this with David Icke. Um, was I? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, said you were, you were speaking to David Icke. Even, the break. Oh, you were listening yeah, to David Icke. Yeah, even David Icke said Oh, no, sorry. Did, did I say David Icke? I meant David Wilcox. Okay. Um, David Wilcox was talking about um, Drake. And David Wilcox said, although he's verified um, his ID, so to speak, he said he doesn't... Um, what Drake comes out with, he said he hasn't confirmed. The information, his contacts... Um, in the higher echelons of the you know, white hat, so to speak, have not come out and said the same thing to him. Now, that, it might be the case that Drake is getting the information from them, it's not been passed down, or else maybe Drake, maybe it's um, um, counterintelligence, psyops, and they're just passing the information on to Drake, knowing, because these people are brilliant at psychology. And, you know, if you think about it, they pass all this information out. Drake is the either unknowingly or knowingly, knowingly the patsy, and he passes the information out. And all these people are on this emotional roller coaster, and they're hoping that this is going to happen. And all of a sudden, you know, the actual um, plug is pulled, and then nothing happens. So, and I'm always kind of skeptical when somebody turns around and says, oh, just sit back and let it all happen. And I'm kind of saying, well, actually, no, I'm going to carry on doing what I'm doing. And if it happens, then brilliant. But I'm not going to sit back and wait. That would be exactly what they want us to do. So I think yeah, David... Yeah, 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 absolutely right. I think David Wilcox is sceptical in his own way. Even though he spoke to Drake and he does speak to Drake off air on, on phone, I think he's kind of saying, well, you know, my people aren't really saying what your people are saying, so let's just see what happens and uh, what develops, you know. Well, that's interesting because he really uh, promoted Drake big time. I think there was a three-hour interview that they did um it's it's all such a mess, but one of the things that really gets me is we have within us 
something that really it wants our daddy. You know, daddy's going to come protect us or somebody's going to, Jesus is going to show up or somebody's going to show up. And I think that in this year of 2012, we really need to grow up and become adults, not children, but adults of whatever deity or religion we choose to believe in. And in being adults, then we need to look at that religion that we believe in to make sure that it was our choice and it wasn't something that was just spoon-fed us for so many years. We got used to it. We never questioned it. And we fit right there in line and lockstep, you know, without thinking mm-hmm. for ourselves. Well, I think... Um, mm-hmm. Sorry, Go well, I was just going to say, from a, I think what I said earlier, from a psychological point of view, if the people behind the scenes are trying to expose what's going on, it is a window of opportunity, and it's going to take a few weeks, if not a month or so, because the whole thing psychologically, if everybody woke up at the same time, it'd be mass hysteria. And I think they're trying to climatize people by saying this bank did this, and this bank did this, and this pharmaceutical company did this. And gradually when people begin to wake up and go, hang on a minute, that's wrong, that's not right, they shouldn't be doing that, I'm a bit concerned about it. On Globally, en masse, you'll have this slow, gradual awakening of the people. And if that's their plan, I think maybe that's why things are going the way they're going. But I don't know, that's just my opinion. Detlef? Yeah, and, um, you know, I'm also wondering about, uh, um, you know, the issue with uh, Barry, uh, Barry Soitoro, um, you know, because that that is announced as well to take place on uh, July 17th by Joe Apayo. He's going to reveal some uh, more news about uh, what is happening over there. So maybe this uh, is going to have uh, consequences. Or maybe, um, you know, um, uh, Barry is uh, forced to start World War Three already before that. Well, we, what, what I think your opinion? I, I think we're already in World War Three. to be honest with you. I think we... I too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we are. But, you know, the real shooting, I mean, you know, the real... <laughs> the real stuff. Well, we have the we have the we have the the London Olympics, which is going to be obviously coming up soon. And there's an awful lot of talk. We had an undercover, uh, a chap went undercover. Uh, the company is doing the security is um, G4S, which is an amalgamation of two security companies. Now, if you look at the security companies who were in charge of 9/11, 7/7, the Madrid bombings, and a number of other places that being attacked, they're all Israeli security companies they've all been israeli yeah. security companies mm-hmm. that's not a coincidence sure. so we don't yeah, so, there's, so a, there's a lot of talk about london olympics and the closing ceremony and what possibly could go off we have um they, they want to put missile launchers on the top of buildings in london and uh, i mean it's ridiculous the amount of security that they have in the london olympics it's like they're expecting something it really yeah, wasn't is. There, uh, wasn't there an attack already revealed? I mean, like, a, you know, a bomb attack on one of the, uh, often on, a, on a U.S. airliner by Yemeni uh, uh, terrorists, by Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, well, <laughs> something well, like that. Well, the trouble is, you never know what to believe. That's the thing, because, yeah, they, you know, they use the media to um, scare people and to... Oh, do you have a caller? Go ahead. I believe I'll give you a caller. It looks like we do have a caller. A nameless caller. Welcome to the program. Hello? Yeah. Hey, hey, good evening. Hi. Hey, look, on your comment about uh, it's time to grow up, okay, I'd like to make a comment on that. Okay. Hey, look, you're right. You know, it is time for every one of us, especially those in uh, the truth community, to take some take some time and do some personal uh, evaluation of uh, where they are in uh, their own lives. Because uh, this, uh, the Drake, you know, I've listened to his uh, Sunday calls, and I've also listened to the people. Uh, clamoring on the lines uh, he's just one of many out there uh, uh, touting this uh, look this way look that way uh, for our salvation you know and I don't mean to get too uh, terribly off topic but here's the deal guys we need to start looking in the mirror every morning every one of us 
every one of us. Look, a lot of people in the truth community haven't worked. And, they, and I'm told they don't work because uh, the system is unfair. Yeah, system is unfair. Yeah, they've lied to us. Yeah, but what about you? What about me? What about each one of us just deciding to do the right thing? Maybe we can change the world when we start changing ourselves. There you go. That's perfect. And, and that's why Detlef and I have been offering a peaceful solution for a long time. And on United We Win, at the top of the page, you see it says, We the people consciously choose to resist tyranny and refuse immoral orders. We unite in peaceful noncompliance every 15th as we educate ourselves and refuse to be accomplices to our own demise. Don't buy, don't comply, ask why. Step out of your uniform and into your life with rights granted by our Creator. The Earth's abundance is our birthright. Remember who you are. And every 15th of the month, it might sound trite, folks, but if we stayed home, even for one full day, if people all over the world stayed home and refused to go out and march, there are over 200,000 people who were out in the streets in Japan to say, no, we don't want you to turn back any nuclear power. They ignored them. You know, but this time, too, and we're calling for three days. This time, we've got the marathon is on the 14th. The 15th is a Sunday. Every month we have a chance to do a three-day strike. Start on Friday. Keep as much as yourself out of the system as you possibly can. And if we really understood the severity of our problems, we would strike and we would never go back. We would go forward. But we have three days coming up. Withhold your money. Spread the word because it is unacceptable. Thank you very much, caller. Do you have um, any other thoughts here? Yeah, I, I just just short. Rather than three days, honey, and I know that everybody has to get on with their lives, but every day, just when you're, when you're brushing your teeth, look in the mirror, look in your eyes. Look in your eyes. Look at the reflection in your eyes. And then you'll start to make the right decision, but do it every day. Every there you day. Go. Yes, it does Thank need you. to be every day. Thank you for calling in. It is every day, folks. It's up to us. Um, Alan and Steve, would you like to hang over a little bit? We're going to have Siobhan Cerisi join us next hour. Do you guys need to go? Well, it's up to you, Steve. Well, you're up in a couple of hours. I'm up, um, I'm up in a couple of hours, but I can I can hang on for a bit. Okay, if you'd like, because we, we had a caller, and I'd like you to have some final words. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks, to the Benny Eastwood Show. And Benny Eastwood is enjoying life right now, having a vacation. I am Karen from UnitedWeWin.me, and we are still joined here by my friend Detlef from WakeNews.net, and we have Alan and Steve from OYMIreland.com. And this hour, we've got Siobhan Cerisi, who's going to join us. She is from HumanityTranscending.com. Welcome to the program, Siobhan. Thank you, Karen. I know it's going to be nice to chat with you. I know, though, that we're going to be losing Alan and Steve here at the next commercial, so I want them to um, shed any light they have now and talk about uh, anything you'd like to share right now. So we make sure that we get that in, Alan and Steve, because I know it's a different time zone in your part of the world. Oh, it is. It's ve- it's very late over here at the moment. In, yeah. just, in the, just gone midnight. Just gone midnight, and uh, the old carriage has turned into a, a pumpkin at the moment. So, <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, we're going to give you the details. Right, The website for Open Your Mind Internet Radio is oamireland.com. And the email, Steve, you want to put that, put that out? Yeah, I'll do my, my email voice. The email address is info at oamireland.com. And we do have a YouTube channel as well that you can go to, and we have loads of information on the website and videos and stuff like that. You can go along. And if you register, then what you can do is um, all the information and links that we get in from our listeners and from people, we normally send out an email with the links that are of, are of interest to people. Um, so if you want to register, it's free, and there's no charge. You can go ahead and do that as well. And one of the things, too, that we were talking about in the break is how we're all kind of, you know, we're looking, we're seeing some of the banksters are being arrested. You know, Drake's talking about sit back and watch the fireworks. We're not exactly sure what's going to happen, but we do know, folks, that you need to be prepared. Yes. You need to be prepared. 
prepared and go ahead Alan well I, I just think with the, uh, the with the demise the financial system is a finite system it can't carry on and we're coming to the end of it now and it's important and we've had Lindsay Williams on the show and various other people who've said the same thing even dear old Bob Chapman who we lost there on the 4th of June and um, basically what people need to do is make sure they have at least a week a week's worth of food stored and stocked up and obviously have uh, money in your pocket it, you know have the dollar in your hand for immediate bartering uh, because the banking system now is experiencing a crisis that it hasn't experienced for a very long time if any time a lot of banks have been affected either by corruption or either by the cyber attack that's gone down banks don't have money anymore so they're being bailed out by the, getting the, the EU are getting this money from fresh air and putting it out there. They can't keep doing that. So the system is eventually going to collapse. So from a self-sufficiency point of view, make sure you have shelter, make sure you have heat, and make sure you have food. And have that as a backup. Just on, in relation to food, I mean, uh, what did we hear a couple of weeks back from one of, one of our guests as well? That not just food, I mean, we, we, we were kind of looking at storing food as in, you know, tinned goods, canned goods and you know other such items but one of our guests also mentioned uh, pe- that kind of powdered stuff you know I, I can't think of the name off the top of my head but uh, the powdered stuff that you mix with I think it's milk or water when you're recuperating after say an illness uh, and it's full of vitamins and minerals so you know even a couple of boxes of that store that as well and and vitamins as well you see this this is preparation it's better to have it and not need it and need it and not have it and it's like car insurance when you get take insurance out on your car you don't take the insurance out to crash your car you take it out just in case you do crash your car so this is the same thing if you store food and nothing happens well you can use it that's no problem at all but it's better to have it there just in case because the world is at a place that it's never been before and we don't know what's going to happen so you know the more self-sufficient you are the better it's going to be for everyone over to you Carol well well said well said (laughs) can I just jump in real quick actually do you remember the the the, the guest that was on just before the the break when when the the, the, the guest uh, the speaker sorry the, 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 the caller uh, mentioned about looking in the mirror every morning and the fact that we are uh, we have noticed it over here on a daily basis now uh, it, it may be for different reasons but with a lot of the resignations that are going on in big companies and banks and uh, big corporations at the moment with all with all those uh, all those resignations I wonder maybe are these people who are resigning have they reached a point in their life where they're getting up in the morning and taking a good, long, hard look in the mirror and they're not liking what's, what they're seeing? So maybe that's kind of helping them in their decision to resign. Maybe. I think you might be right in a, a certain part of that. But it's the other side that they're getting out. They're the rats that are leaving the sinking ship and hoping that they don't get caught. Maybe. So I think there's a, probably... It's you know, a possibility. It's yeah. a mix, mix, mixture there, yeah. Yeah. Um, just uh, just uh, n- yeah. just yeah. news that's tr- come in quickly. Uh, apparently, there's been a big protest about the the missile defence in London for the London Olympics. There was a big protest about it by the local residents, um, but apparently the the protest didn't work, and the missile defence deployment is going to go ahead despite the protests. Yeah, sure, because it's written in in the Rockefeller um, um, uh, papers, you know. Um, uh, they they wrote a uh, few years ago that there will be 13,000 uh, casualties in uh, in the London Olympics in this year so it has to happen you know y- yeah that's why. It, it's it's part we the document you're talking to uh, talking about there Detlev you're correct if people want to get a copy of that they can go to oamireland.com and go down to the, f- the bottom of the page where recent articles are and the actual PDF document is there it's like the PNAC agreement which is um, the project for the new American century. And the information is actually in there. And they talk about the amount of people that have been killed on the London Olympics. And, what, and as you say, that Lev, how did they know that? You know, what, you know, and they're talking about it in past tense. In past tense, exactly. Yeah, so it's a written, it's a written history already. You know, it's all prepared. Now we have a question here. Uh, maybe before you go, um, I don't know whether you read this. 
on Roger Hayes. Has, has anyone petitioned for a writ of habeas corpus on his behalf? I believe That's something. Which came up. Yeah, I believe they've been. Uh, they, somebody has done something like that, but they're not getting any luck with that. He's got twenty. Apparently, he's going to be locked up for twenty-one days. Um, I, I, I do believe they are looking to get the paperwork together to go in there. Um, it, they either have done that or they're going to do it. So, if there's any news updates, up to you, we'll be keeping people posted. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, well. Well, we have to do anything uh, possible uh, to help our fellow friends, you know, because truth and freedom of press and freedom of opinion is so important. You know, if that is not uh, uh, possible anymore, where have we gone? I mean, you know. <laughs> well, this is the whole thing about the freedom. We we have, there's also a radio station over here called TNS Radio, and the guys at TNS are very, they're very sovereign guys, and they look for solutions all the time. And one of the... Um, the uh, host on TNS is really being harassed at the moment by the powers to be. Um, there's a video on YouTube of two guards that actually turned up at, at his house wanting to speak to him, and he, re he refused to open the door, and he says, I do not recognize you, and they left him. But this seems to be now more of a common occurrence for him, So, um, which is sad to see, but this is what happens when you are going against you know, the, 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 the oligarchs in the system this is what they do. They look at harassment. They look at ways to try and get at you. But like, and you know that, that level. I mean, you just had your equipment confiscated by these people turning up at half four in the morning. Absolutely. Here in uh, in Rothschild City in Basel, the headquarters of the Bank of International Settlements, which is the Rothschild Bank. <laughs> okay, here we go, Karen. Well, it, it's why too when we had our caller earlier when he said look in the mirror we really need to do that we need to understand we have been trained like dogs to go along with whatever our masters tell us that they must do and the only real law that should be around is do no harm you know not all the legal economic conquest and bull crap that we are forced to put up with just because they decided and these again these are our public servants we're supposed to tell them what to do and instead through all these years of poor training we're relegated to trying to chase them around like if you watched what in the world are they spraying at the end of that film and you've got michael murphy standing in the halls of congress literally having to try and chase down these misrepresentatives who are scurrying like rats back to their little cubicles where they can suck up the money that they're paid, the lifetime pensions with all the benefits, while excluding themselves from the bogus legislation when they won't even bother to look up. Well, one of the things, Karen, myself and Steve were invited down to a county in uh, a county Waterford. We did a, a talk down there called the Awaken Waterford. And we talked about the whole awakening process down there. And we said, uh, a DJ years ago on a mainstream radio station over here said, Ireland is a country of NIMBYs. And NIMBYs is, the, uh, the, um, is short for not in my backyard. And basically, because things are not happening in a person's backyard, they're not really cared about anything else. As long as it's not happening in my backyard, I don't care. But what, don't, what these people don't realize is, whether consciously or subconsciously, they will be affected eventually by the system. And by that time, it's going to be too late. So they have this false sense of security, thinking that, well, I'm okay, Jack, so did everybody else. But to be honest with you, they're not okay, because they will be eventually affected if the system keeps going the way it's going. So people, and it will. Uh, and it will exactly. So they need to be, they need to start getting active and waking up to this, and waking up. And you don't have to. What we said about the waking up process is that they don't need to know about the new world order or the Illuminati or the Rothschilds. They just need to know that they're not happy with the system. People don't need to know how electricity works to use a hairdryer. Okay, so. When you're waking up people, they don't need to know about the global elite or the cabal. They just need to know that they're not happy with the current government and the government are corrupt and doing what they're doing. And that will be enough to wake them up to get them started, hopefully. That's, that's
that's it, to follow the money, because it is the world is our backyard and our front yard, and we are all created from that same divine essence which runs through us equally. Now, what we do when we're down here is a different story, but the simplicity of knowing that bankers are making all this money and huge bonuses at the end of the year while good people are being thrown out into the street. These are the types of systems that we honor and obey by living our lives as usual, by paying all of our taxes, by going along with the miscreants in power. We are supporting systems of inequality, systems of injustice. You know, there is no justice in the world any longer when someone can just say, because I said so. And that has to go. We have to start asking the big questions. Who are you, and why are you telling me what to do? Where do you get your authority? And now, Siobhan, I want to get into um, also the book that you've written, which is just an excellent book, and it's also um, on audio. And actually, we're going to have to get a couple more of the chapters. We're, <laughs> we're keeping up with you on this, but you've got the quotes. All of this is just so well tied together. Um, thank you so much for writing that book, Siobhan. Thank you for saying that, Karen. Um, you're welcome. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a crash course. Um, so for people who want to like learn kind of fast what's going on and how we got here, it's just a good um, crash course book. You will really get the essence of the problems that we're facing um, by by reading it. And I mean, I'm not the only one, right? There's a lot of people who write books about this stuff, but um, it's it also is like part of my own personal experience of coming to know this information myself, which is an intense process. There's, n there's nothing fun about learning this stuff except for the fact that, for me, it, it definitely um, threw my growth into high gear. For some reason, like becoming aware of these things made me look at life completely differently, myself completely differently, others differently, and uh, helped me awaken in a lot of ways. So in that sense, it's been beneficial, but um, it's it's painful learning this stuff. It really is. So I just encourage people to kind of buck up and face the music, um, because you know time in some way is a factor. Although I can't know that at the absolute level because I can't see that big, but it feels like time is a little bit um, time is of the essence, so to speak. So um, you know, it like does. Karen. Yeah, like like Karen says, like you say, it's it's important to really practice um, being uh, more self-sufficient, less plugged in, and that's when you talk about you know for three days, just making it a point to like literally turn inward and and stop looking outside um, of ourselves for whatever it is we're needing, and just be be home, be doing what we're doing, but be not plugged in. Like three days to just unplug, and we need to be doing that for for practice because I believe we're going to need to know how to do that even more so as time yeah. goes on. Well, and also it's unity. So many people are out there saying, "Well, I'm only one person. What can I do?" Mm -hmm. Well, look at there are what over seven billion of us on this planet, over 300 million in the United States alone. You know, that's a lot of people running around obeying the few who are giving the orders. Why are we actually taking jobs that mean we'll have to put on a uniform and go kill people that we don't know? Or we'll have to put on a different kind of uniform and knock on the door because we're the IRS guys coming to take your house. What kind of people are they turning us into because we're forced to have jobs like this to feed our families and yet our jobs come at the expense of someone else. And it totally goes against the do no harm principle. And when we do unite, when we understand our greater numbers so far surpass the dominant, insane, inbred, psychopathic pedophiles who are running this planet, when we really understand they're dropping mm -hmm. toxins on us every day, in the yep. form of Ken trails. They've poisoned our water. They've poisoned our food. Why the hell should we keep working when our money is used against us like this when instead we could fully bring this criminal cartel to a halt when enough of us decide no more, no more? Yeah, and a lot of us are deciding that, you know, in, in our hearts and minds. I, I certainly am, and um, I'm willing 
to do what it takes to to live free you know it's just it's just come to that point and i don't want to be confrontational i do will not fall to violence so um it will be what it will be <laughs> you know i hope i hope to live a long life and be healthy and and enjoy this world but we have to be willing to um do what it takes i think to be free all right, Alan and Steve, I know that you need to go here. Thank you very much for being part of this this afternoon. Folks, we will be back after the break with more from Siobhan and Detlef and me. Check out unitedwewin.me. It takes you. Join us. Join us.